Wrestling fans, it is time for another episode of the Pile Driver. The Speedy Boys are back after an action-packed weekend. Woo! I am your host, the Big Dog Dean Samples, followed by the one and only, the best in the world, Mike Allen. How you doing, brother? Dude, I'm great. I'm trying to still recoup. It's Monday, and I'm still just reeling from this weekend. Bro, um, it my weekend. I mean, obviously, I did a little stuff before you Friday night. I want to shout out real quick. I know that we're a wrestling podcast, but I want to shout out my friend Rachie. She might listen. She might hear this somehow. She threw a kick ass party with Brandon Hardesty from the Bump and Uglies at the Beachland Ballroom. It was phenomenal. She, she basically almost sold out the whole place by herself yeah. as a promoter. So she kicked butt. Shout outs to her. That's awesome. Um, Saturday night though. Saturday night is when the podcast action kicked in. And boy, oh boy, was Stark County Fairgrounds jumping, baby. What a debut show for Neo Pro Wrestling. Neo Pro 1 was in the building, and it did not disappoint. Okay, so we got there. Oh, here it is. Dingers. The the doors opened for us at 5. We had gotten the VIP. We got the VIP tickets. The doors opened for us at 5 o'clock, So, which means we got to go in an hour before the showtime. And sit down. Regular doors open at five thirty. We got to go an hour before showtime. We we were so excited. We showed up about what, like four fifteen. Yeah, we were super early. We were super early, man. I didn't. I didn't want. It. I didn't know where it was. I wanted to make sure. I wanted to be first. We ended up being second in the in the door. Perfect. We got to pick whatever seat we wanted in the house. We pulled up four nice joints right by ringside, and we Bro. kicked it. And man, oh, dude, what a show. It's just from top to bottom. It started off amazing. It, it, I don't have any anything bad to say about the, the opening of Neo. Everything we both off, showed up to Neo Pro with 100% batteries. Yeah. And I, we were so much good action. Did us both taking videos and pictures and just taking in moments? Our both of our phones died midway through the main event. Yeah. That should tell you all you need to know. <laughs> Thankfully we had Paulie got us some photos. We got some good clips in there yeah. with um, you know, but shout out Yo Polly. It was yeah, it was me, big dog, Yo Polly the hammer, and my daughter came along with us and we sat there and we ate Marco's pizza. It was good. Yeah. Um, I, I got to see some, you know, Shane Douglas, obviously. But like yeah. I got to see I got to see Matt Taylor, you know, bring you know, hanging out. I got to see Brucey e. Gray. Hanging out, um, everybody just this, just the atmosphere in this place was it was good. The Wilbur it, chance, the Wilbur chance at the before he even before not even the show hadn't even started. Like the ring announcer came out, and like it was one of those moments where the ring announcer comes out and he's like, "Hey, who are you excited to see?" And everybody here, he the ring announcer was totally expecting a Shane Douglas ECW something to that effect, and we got a fucking wilbur chant we got a awesome. wilbur chant because we knew why we were there baby wilbur fucking Whitlock. and dude like i said from start to bottom from um, from start to finish this show did not disappoint in the, in any sense of the word absolutely i'm hats off a, to every single person involved time. behind the scenes uh everywhere concessions yeah it's everybody everybody, everybody involved that put their hand into making neo pro one happen <laughs> be, the, the, be the successful debut that they had. It's all because you guys did an amazing job. So hats yeah. off to you guys. Shout Love yeah, shouts out to the ring crew, um, yeah, ring everybody. announcer. Everybody did a great job. The talent, everybody. Oh, excuse me, I guess I'm on my throat there. Um, yeah, the talent behind the stage. You know, some of them I was super happy to see. You know, it's always nice to see, like we said last week. It's always nice to see those people that we know and we've we've interacted with before, and they're. they're it's a. I would like to think nobody's ever said that to me, obviously, but I would like to think, hey, I recognize those guys. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's not from the podcast, even if it's just from us seeing us front row, you know, at multiple shows. Hey, I recognize those guys. They're, you know, they keep coming, you know, they get familiar faces in the crowd, so to speak. And it's right. a good thing. Um, no, the energy and the fans there, Neo Pro, were phenomenal. And I can only expect it to. Grow up, go up from there. Well, man. At one point, they had to bring out more chairs. Yeah. There was not um, enough chairs out. They had to bring out more chairs, which is an awesome sign. They had bleachers stacked up and the bleachers were set up. That was that was cool. Yeah. Um, 
I, I really, really liked the setup. I liked the entrance way. I liked the, you know, the way it was going. Um, the ring is so beautiful. For, the black the, the ring is beautiful. For future, for future reference, for future reference in Stark County Fairgrounds, because I know where the camera guys are going to go, I'm not going to sit on that side of the ring anymore because I'm trying to take my own pictures. Shout outs to Capture by Shep. I'm sure the pictures are going to turn out amazing. Oh, hell yeah. But they just, you know, as and a nothing, fan. There, nothing against you guys. Nothing against yeah. you guys. You just, I just couldn't see over you. It's fine. Um, I, you're doing a job. I get it. I'm not pissed at you. I'm just. Um, it, it was. I didn't get to sit where I wanted to sit. Like I said, we were number two, right? We were number two and in the, the no- fucking building, and the people that went in front of us went to the spot that I knew I wanted to sit at, dude. And I was a little salty about that. Yeah. So that's, but that's fine. Um, but the it even started. It started off hot, dude. It started off hot. With one of the greatest tag teams in Northeast Ohio, Midwest, anywhere around right now, Warhaus, going against a team we had never heard of. From Detroit, Michigan. From Detroit, Michigan. Studio 86. I was impressed with Studio 86. (laughs) That was a good tag team match. It was a great tag team match. I was very impressed by Studio 86. Um, They came in, you know, obviously, we're Cleveland. They're Detroit we're not friends no. so they you know come out in their blue and silver and they immediately get trash talked by everybody yeah, they were and they gave home. it they gave it right back and it didn't deter them from the match i think that's probably a great highlight of a, of a heel yeah is that they walked away with the win a surprise they win. did Shocked they pulled a out a win against warhouse something not many people can say no and we're not when we say we were shocked you guys walked away without the, with the win it's not because yeah. you guys. It's because Warhoss is it's Warhoss. Warhoss. It's Warhoss. Like, I saw both you guys get. You um, made Pat the Bruiser bleed. Nobody I saw, made yeah, Pat, bleed Pat the Bruiser bleed. <laughs> but I saw Pat the Bruiser cross body block both of them. Yeah. And that's not a little man, dude. And, you yeah. know, it. I thought it was over right there. But somehow they were able to pull it out. They had a solid manager. I'm not sure on his name. I'm not sure on the manager's name. But he was out. He played his role perfectly. And Studio 86 was able to walk out of Canton, Ohio with a win. So kudos to you. You want to know it? Opening want to know it? Neo Pro. So hope to see you back again for sure because you guys put on a good show. The next match after this following was uh, was originally scheduled to be Tatiana versus uh, Reese Ramon. Reese Ramon could not make it, unfortunately, due to scheduling conflicts or something Happens. came up. Yeah, which is what it happens. The card is always subject to change. Remember that in wrestling. Um, So Neo Pro found a suitable replacement. They promised Tatiana that. And it was the one and only Super Oprah. The ovation for Super Oprah. I'm not familiar. I was not familiar. I was not either, but. Apparently, Super the Oprah, fans were because they were lit, dude. As soon as, as soon as Super pop. Oprah came out, as soon as Super Oprah came out, there was a chant of Super Oprah from the crowd. Like they knew who who it was. They knew following around. So Oprah came in and did the thing. I, I mean, she shoved Josh's face all up in her private parts, and it was hilarious. It was it was, it was, a, it was a funny match. It was a funny match. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I loved it. And a lot everyone else loved I'm it. I'm glad you because... I'm glad you said it because I was gonna say it and I didn't really want to call him out. Paulie was not a big <laughs> yeah. fan. It Pauly, was not yeah, Paulie was I don't know why. I mean, maybe like you said, it's not I even got video of, of him like <laughs> Super <laughs> Oprah was Super Oprah was very flamboyant with it, and it was awesome. I thought I loved it. And it you know, awesome. and I agree though, some people might not like that kind of stuff. It's the same as like a Joey Ryan kind of deal, like when he was doing penis flips and stuff like that. But some people thought it was stupid. I thought it was hilarious. Everybody there <laughs> loved it, except for Paul. You know, but yeah, Super <laughs> Oprah went crazy. And it was the it was the wig, dude. When when Tatiana pulled off the wig, it like it flipped over. a switch. It yeah, flipped dude, it a was switch. Awesome. Super Oprah awesome. went ape shit crazy, ended up on the top rope and let loose a crazy Uso splash to pick up the victory. Like off the top rope, it was great. I was hyped, dude. I jumped splash. out of the seat, like, let's go. It was a good, it was good, good match. That was awesome. And then there was a, the following that was a 
a one on one match, which is probably could have been the first time the ever. This is the first time ever they've ever fought one on one. Really? Yeah. That's what Paulie said last time he was on the show, remember? We were yeah, talking about this. You're right. The show, Robbie Starr versus the mobile home record, Bruce Gray. Bro, I have a newfound respect for Robbie Starr. And Bruce okay. Gray. They put on a I mean, I, I've always had respect for Bruce Gray, but I've always seen Bruce Gray as a tag team wrestler. So seeing Brucey do such a good job as a singles wrestler was very, I you know, I won't say like surprising because it's not. I expect him to be a good wrestler. But just to see the transition, most of the time that's a little harder for people. Yeah. But Robbie, okay. I've never seen Robbie play the bad guy role. And it was glorious. It was so good from the push ups in the ring, from the push ups. And like, I know that I caught a, I caught a solid video just because I just happened to be videoing at the right time when Robbie's telling the crowd he hates him. And he just he turned around and my camera just happened to be right there in his face and he looked right at him. And I hate you too. And it was, dude, just the it was glorious, man. It was. It, I respect. And that, and Paulie, that was my you first know, time seeing him in a heel role as well. And it was. Same with Jimmy. Same yeah. with Jimmy. Same they both knocked it. They're amazing. Amazing. I'm, I love, I, I prefer heel. Same. And that's, look, that was my next statement. As Paulie told me, it's very easy to get the crowd to hate you. It's not easy. It's not hard, or it's not easy to get the crowd to love you. No. So being the baby face obviously is, you know, a bigger challenge in the wrestling world, I would assume. Makes sense. Because it's hard to get somebody to love you. I, I can walk out, you know, I would never say this. Polly Polly told me this too. He was like, that's why you could never be a, a manager in Cleveland, like a heel manager. Polly told me I could never be a heel manager in Cleveland. He said, because you'd never be able to dog the Browns. And I was like, You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> like, you're I could, not like, wrong. I was like, I can dog the Guardians though, no problem. <laughs> right. But yeah, so I, I it was real good to see both of them do such a great job in that heel role. Um, but the Robbie crowd was behind it. It was every, the whole match from Robbie. Start to finish. Per- yeah. Robbie particularly was really good. Brucey was really good. There was a couple big back body drops by Robbie where he just picked him up and dropped him. And I thought, I thought it was over. It was three in a row, I believe. And he just picked him up in the last, the third one, Brucey kind of just went limp, dude. And I was like, Oh crap, it's over. Robbie picked him up, gave him a little spin around. DDT by the by the mobile home record for the dub. It was smooth too. It, it dude, it, it was clean. I was like I said, I was very happy to see Brucey in the singles match. It was a nice change of pace, I think, for me for sure. to see him to see him in that light. Then, like I said, that was arguably match of the night candidate in my opinion. It was. I think that they were all yeah. really good matches, but that that was great. You want to, so the next one we weren't advertised. Nobody was advertised this match, um, but it was a it was a really good match. H two V two Hendricks Hawkins and Vic Vice took on the Drifters Ace Evans and Jackson Shadows. Dude, um, first off, before we even get into the match, let's talk about how fucking badass these dudes' masks were. They, were they had awesome. on these masks like like awesome. a wolf mask. It was like some. Like a mask you would see on like a Harry Potter character, like dude, like and but I mean in a good way because like the Death Eater masks are fucking cool looking. Like this fucking thing was like wolf face and it stopped and it came out the nose and it had like black diamonds and shit like spikes on it. It was crazy awesome, dude. These dudes sweet. looked scary. I was about it, dude. And I'm familiar with H two V two with absolute intense wrestling. Um, I've seen them yeah. wrestle before. We saw them wrestle at um, two and six, I believe. Yep. Yeah. They can go, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They. I mean, they they pulled out a dub here, and it was, it was more like it a, wasn't it was, easy. It was more like this match was more like, in my opinion, like a, um, what the drifters? The drifters were more like a brawling, yeah. beat them up style. And H two V two is a high fly and jump around, you know, at agility type of thing. So it was a good, you know, type matchup, so to speak. Yeah, it was a good mix. It was a good mix. And there was plenty of times I thought the drifters were going to walk away with the with the W there. They were beating yeah. shit out of them at one point. Oh, dude! Several points throughout the match. It was 
well done for both teams. H2V2 comes out victorious. Starts their Neo Pro careers off 1-0. 1-0. It's a good way to start a tag team division. Absolutely. I would not mind seeing Studio 86 versus H2V2. Ooh. That'd be good. I can't wait to see how these titles shake out. I can't wait to see how the Neo can't front office. I can't wait to see office. how they look. I can't wait to see how the front office at Neo Pro, you know, shakes out. I mean, I agree with you on how they look, but I can't wait to see how the front office shakes out. Like, how? Like, what? Like maybe a tournament, you know, maybe, you know, ladder match. Like, how, how do you decide who's your first champion? You know, like, that's the fuck. Like, that's cool. Shits are endless. The next match, though. Is probably you go ahead and bring him in, baby. This is another one. That my can candidate, it's probably my candidate of the night. One person I'm very, very familiar with. Another person I was just introduced to that night, the first time seeing him. The first man, my savior, my guiding light, Matthew Taylor, going one on one against a certifiable movie star in letting, Justin Maine. You're letting Matthew love you. Oh, yeah. I've been I've been trying to tell him to love. You've let opened you love your heart him. to him. All right. Oh yes, I've been trying to tell you to just let him love you, child. Pray with me. Dude, it's fuck. That's my favorite. Fuck. I love that shit so much. He's I so love good. it, dude. When he grabs her hand and puts him in that little wrist so lock, good. I love it so much. It's so um, good. But that's beside the point. Justin Maine showed out. Bro. Holy crap, dude! I am First a fan off, of that dude. No. First off, I can see Justin Maine playing Johnny Cage in a Mortal Kombat movie. That's what yes. he looks like. Um, second off, he was a phenomenal wrestler. Yeah. Phenomenal. He was so good. These two what? went to war, and the storytelling throughout the match, everything, dude. They did such a good job. This was another match of the night candidate for me as well. Man. I mean, technically, all the... All the matches were so good. It's been con- well, it's been confirmed already, and you know I know you haven't brought it up yet, but we do have a new a, the next Neo Pro event, and we'll talk about the date, we'll talk about what it's called, and all that stuff later. But Matthew Taylor and Justin Main took this twenty minutes to the limit. We, this, we didn't even know there was a time limit. Yeah, I didn't know there was a time. If limit they said if the announcer said it, I didn't hear him. We did not. Yeah, I did not hear him. So that's okay though. We didn't, I didn't yeah. know there was a time limit. I liked the surprise. The Once it said five minutes left, we're like, there's a time the, limit? What? Let's go. I, the the hand was this far off off the mat, and Matt, and the bell rang for time limit draw. Nobody won this match. It was no contest, no yeah. draw, time however you want to call it. Time limit but for draw. the next Neo Pro event, which, like I said, we'll talk about in a little bit. We'll just say it right now. The next Neo Pro event. Neo Pro Revenge. It's gonna be Saturday, June seventeenth, at the Stark County Fairgrounds. Right back. I'm, at I'm it. there. I'm there. I already told Jay. I already talked to. I already. As soon as they're ready, I'm buying a ticket. Secure the tickets. Let's as soon go. as they're ready, we're buying tickets. I'm yep. there, front row, just like last time. This show is. I'm definitely. I'm in for it. So, um, but this match was phenomenal. Like Dean said, storytelling, everything was just glorious. At Revenge. We have Matt Taylor going one on one against Justin Main again. No time limit. <laughs> so these boys good, are just bro. gonna go. These boys are just gonna go, man. I was supposed to make a no disqualification. Mm. Let's just do it. Mm. It was no time limit's good though. I love it. This, pro- go. this match was probably my favorite match of the night. I mean, every match was good, but if I had to pick, like, if you were like pick one, it's probably this one. Yeah, Matt Taylor and Justin. May I can't went, wait to be hard. there. We're going to be there. I hope you guys are ready. If you guys are new to Neo Pro or you're, you were there, you're going to be a continuous fan there. You're going to be showing up. You're going to see us there every time. Oh, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. No. Speedy Boys are here. The Pile Driver guys are here to stay. We got, what, two more matches still? Yep, two more matches. This one, this next one, I was a little worried about going into. We talked about it with Wilbur. Um, the David versus Goliath. Yeah, that's basically all it is. If you've never seen Beast Man in person, holy shit! When he walks out of that curtain, is he scary as fuck? That mask, he's got like outfit, it's dumb. this big fucking Tusca mask, and it's he's a big scary guy. 
Yeah. And, you know, Bray, mad props, brother. Mad props for all the effort you put in. Bray killed it, though. He held Great his own. I mean, Bray's a vibe. Bray's a vibe. And I think that's one of my favorite things to say because he is his whole di- his whole demeanor is a, is a vibe. And that's, you know, that's what he, he goes by. The vibe, Bray McKenzie. He he was giving it he was giving it the beast man. Two weeks in a row I've seen this man Bray McKenzie, and two weeks in a row I've seen him go. I've seen him go. I saw him go against Matt Taylor and Beast Man. These are not two, you know, jobbers. He's not going against jobbers. He's going up against guys I've seen hold heavyweight titles. Yeah, and he's he's holding his own. So I'm I'm really yeah. excited to see Bray McKenzie. Beast- Definitely up and comer to watch in Neo Pro Wrestling. Beastman may have walked away with the W, and it was well deserved. He fought his ass off too. Bray gave it to him, but Bray, don't hang your head, man. So he does. You're only going over here, bro. You're the, and yeah, you're here know. Yeah, he 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 knows it, and he he knows. gives it his all. He gives it his all, and that's all I you know that's all I want from you. That's all I want from you. It's what we tell our softball team. I don't. You can't win them all. You're never gonna win them all ever. Put you got to give your best effort every There's time. There's a lot of and positive so, to gain from that, though. Yeah, so far from him, I've seen him give 110. percent both times I've seen him wrestle. So, so far, so good in my book, dude. Keep doing your thing. You got a bright future. I hope your chest is okay because this beast man chopped the hell out of you at one point. I was like, he oh. almost, beast man almost threw him into the front row at one point, too, which I thought was kind of scary. But Jexy, Jexy Black, who was controlling the beast man, you know, kind of held him back and he was going to throw him into the crowd, though. He was, he picked up Papa Smurf and was going to throw him. He was, oh my God, I forgot all about He was going to body slam Papa Smurf. Yeah, Jexy is like, no, put him down. I was just like Papa. terrified. Like, oh, oh, and while we're already. talking, while we're talking about Papa Smurf, I just want to preface that Papa Smurf now, two weeks in a row, has called out Yo Polly in the ring. I love it. Papa Smurf sees Yo Polly sitting ringside. Get in here. Come on. See, I'm not the only one that wants to see Polly get in the ring. So that was good. And then last but most certainly not least, you have and look, while like I said, we were talking on Jimmy Shane's heel performance. I've never seen his partner wrestle any other way. I've seen Patrick Hayes twice. I've that's my first time seeing Patrick Hayes. I've gotten I've I've, I, saw, his... I saw him at the sneak peek. That's it. I saw him at the sneak peek the week before. I've been bumping his uh, theme song for the past few days. He it's nasty, dude. He's good at what he does. Uh, um, again, him and Jimmy are choice together, dude. That's They're good so team. good. That's a good tag the, team. Great tag team. I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, but again, I know Jimmy can go as a singles wrestler, and there's no doubt in my mind that Patrick Hayes can go as a singles wrestler. I saw him at the sneak peek singles action. Um, it's it just the the dynamic they both bring and the, the, I don't know, maybe he brings out the best in Jimmy and bad guys bring out the best in each other because I'm very, I'm very excited to see more of Patrick Hayes. I I like for sure, dude. That was my first time seeing him in person. I just heard from several people that he's very, very talented. I seen some video. Um, He definitely is. And then seeing him in person, dude, Patrick, bro, you got it, bro. Yeah, one hundred and ten percent, man. He he's good. He's real good. Um, but you know, taking on a team potentially being a Neo Pro heavyweight champion at some point down the line. Again, there we don't know, but taking on a team, which I mean, you would want to say led by the franchise Shane Douglas, but in 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 in, in Canton, Ohio, in Canton, yeah. Ohio, this was a team led by Wilbur Whitlock, baby. Wilbur Whitlock. There was Wilbur Whitlock chance before. So there started. was there was Wilbur Whitlock signs in the crowd. There were Wilbur Whitlock signs in the crowd. Wilbur Whitlock is universally loved at Stark County Fairgrounds, and it showed, and they showed out hard. Multiple, multiple Wilbur chants throughout the night. Um, he came out and is again the pop, I thought dude. The the, the place pop erupted was phenomenal. Well, deserved. it was it was great. I you know. I haven't heard anything like that in the indie show. I popped. Oh, I did too. Of course I did. I was excited. That was the reason we were there. It was, well, and, you know, I did find out some actually some good things too. That we'll talk about a little bit later um, about Wilbur and we'll be seeing him, you know, pretty soon again, actually. So I'm excited about that. It was 
just the the pop though, dude. The the start of the match, the way they just immediately went this way with each other and just battled all over the arena. That was they, great, dude. There was weapons at one point. Paulie handed Shane Douglas or or yeah, Shane Douglas a chair. Yeah. Like Paul Paulie handed a chair. His first interaction with Shane Douglas ever. Paul before, the, before that, he came by. W legend. Oh, it was funny when Shane Douglas walked by because he triple threaded everybody as he walked around the around the ring. Paulie didn't like you know. Paulie's not a cheer, and that's why I said I've never really seen Paulie cheer, um, except for a Matt Taylor match. I've seen Paulie cheering, but going to WWE main like you'll get you know some yay from Paulie, but Paulie's not like us. He's not standing up and he's not loud and vocal and very you know raw. Right, he just you know? certain takes everything in. Yeah, I respect. He, him. Yeah, he does, and, and that's I love, fine. I love Paulie. Shane Douglas forced Paulie to give him a triple threat. <laughs> yeah. Like, Man. Paulie's hand, like, Paulie's hand, like, right here, and Shane kind of just brought his hand in and touched Paulie, gave Paulie a triple threat anyways. But, you know, yeah, I saw Shane Jimmy and Wilbur Shane. gave it, man. They battled it out with Patrick and Jimmy. They battled it out. I saw Jimmy Shane beat Shane Douglas over the head with a chair, with a um, garbage can. I seen Jimmy Patrick Hayes. Lay, I saw Patrick Hayes lay the Sandman, or I'm sorry, lay Shane Douglas up against the bleachers and give him one of the nastiest rights I've ever seen in my life. I then, in return, saw Shane Douglas stand up, almost pull Patrick Hayes' eyeballs out of his socket, and then throw him into the concession stand table. Yeah. A table then, I, I'm I'm going to assume that Patrick had brought it earlier in the match closer to ringside. But at one point I was paying attention to Jimmy and Shane over here. And out of the peripheral of my eye, I saw Mr. Whitlock throw one of the nastiest cutters off the apron through a table that I've seen God. in years. I wish I had like, that. I, I wish didn't I get had it off. I'm pissed. I didn't get it. Off Someone the has it. Someone in that crowd has a good video angle of that. Cause I, I need to see it better. Cause I caught it. Because the right oh, end I too. heard it. I like I was like I heard somebody go oh oh and I turned around to look yeah, I, that way and mid I mid seen, like, air the last bit of it cutter yeah he was already mid air I saw head. enough that still I just jumped up like let's go <laughs> like, this is awesome dude dude it was just such a great main event um afterwards obviously you know after Wilbur put Pat through the table Jimmy Shane had Shane Douglas inside. Shane loaded up the Shane loaded up the fist. He pulled a chain out, loaded up the fist, and clocked Jimmy, and pulled Jim, it up. Jimmy hit him with the spear, though. Jimmy did get him with a spear, and I look. I love you, Jimmy. Jimmy made me eat crow because he told me he was going to spear Shane Douglas, and he speared him, and then he pointed right at me. He told you <laughs> anything that happens to Shane Douglas is on you. Oh, dude, yes, I forgot about that. He walked straight up to me in the crowd, man. He walked straight up to me in the crowd and was like. Anything I do to Shane Douglas tonight's on your head. So Shane, I'm sorry that Jimmy, you know, beat you upside the head with a garbage can. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I apologize. But Jimmy Shane, I will eat the crow. You told me you were gonna spear Shane Douglas, and I watched you spear a legend. Almost pulled off the victory. Almost did, dude. Shane Douglas loaded up that right hand and it just it knocked you. It gave you one. So and Shane um, Shane and Wilbur. Get the W. Jane and Wilbur get a W. And then the ring gets gets filled with streamers. Black and orange, Neo Pro colors. It was awesome. It was a good moment, man. It was very, very like retro kind of with the streamers. I loved that. I love it, too. Um, It was such a good celebration at the end. Uh, Wilbur got out and started talking to the fans. It was it was great, man. A he lot came of out and took pictures. Yeah, yeah. We got a solid, nice picture. We we made sure to link up with him afterwards and get a nice picture with the ring and stuff. Shane so. Douglas even got in and we started an ECW chant. They're like, no, no, no. And he's like, Neo what? Pro. The Neo Pro went. He even well, introduced real quick, real quick, Bam Bam Bigelow. I'm and not Chris gonna, Candido. I'm not gonna real quick, real quick, because he did introduce Bam Bam and Chris, and that was really cool. But let's give credit where credit is due, my friend. Shane Douglas did not start a neo pro chant the big dog started the neo pro chant 
You're right, you're right. The big dog started the Neo Pro chant. The best in the world followed in, and we got some pretty big voices, and people followed suit. That's true. Because Neo Pro totally deserved them flowers, dude. Oh, for sure, dude. It was so, so good. And while I appreciate Shane Douglas for everything he's done and showing up and put on a great performance, that was a Neo Pro show. And if everyone's like that, man, you got that. Let me just say they set a high bar for themselves. Yeah. They set out because that go. Let's get into it right now. I, Neo Pro won four out of five pile drivers, Dean. Five pile drivers. Not even I too, I too am giving Neo Pro one five, five out of five pile, pile drivers. That's like a five star Dave Meltzer, but we're better. They set the bar high for themselves, man. That that was a phenomenal show. Revenge is going to be great. I hope. I I can't wait. Like I'm really really excited. I can't wait. I dude. don't. I mean, I I we're don't. Gonna... Dean, hit him with the date one more time. Neo, Neo Pro, Pro Revenge. Revenge, right back at Stark County Fairgrounds. Saturday, June 17th. Saturday, June 17th. We'll Follow be there. Neo Pro Wrestling on all the socials. Go to neopro.net. I think it's neoprowrestling.net. Um, let me just double check there. My Yeah, neoprowrestling.net um, for more news, too. Uh, they're looking at any local business looking for sponsorship. Hit them up, too. They're looking for sponsors for the next show. We might even get to know. <laughs> But we'll be talking. We'll be talking yeah. to you, Jason. I'll be talking yes. to you about that too. So maybe the pile driver will be sponsoring some revenge. Um, now this same night, this dude, it and I hate it. I've told everybody. I've told all of them that I've talked to. Everybody that I called that I messaged to get re- you know results from. I told them I was so upset that we had to miss this show. Two bangers of a show going on in two same counties time. at the same time. We were supposed to have Matt, our boy Maddie. Something came our, up. He yep. wasn't able to make it. That's okay. I Things got happen. results. I got my results. I got what happened. I got some dirt. Um, we got already got some backstage interviews from what you know what had gone on. And let me tell you. So let's just jump right into it. Breaking down barriers eleven live from LC three. Another the benefit negative. for the Murray Ridge Murray Ridge School. Um, it's a, it's a fantastic show that they put on every year this is their 11th year doing it it was all for a great cause uh what the people do at murray ridge with children with special needs or people in general with special needs it's phenomenal and it's just the fact that they've been partnering up and doing this every year it's just the hats off the brand and everybody involved in mega so it's, it's a great show last, every year so last last i read there was almost 500 people there and the, the pictures i seen it was packed it was packed it was it looked awesome um it started off with a banger with a banger in a new in a new I guess they're calling it the Hoss division. I love that. You had Big Mo going up against Mister Too Damn Thick Miles Jacobs. Um, it, are- it, it you know I I read that it was a good match. It wasn't very long of a match. Um, it's I think I got three minutes and eleven seconds in a final match count Too with Big, Big Mo bump meets man with Big Mo getting a pinfall. After a close, I mean, that's the Lariat God right there. So Lariat it only makes God. sense. It only makes sense. Um, The next match, sorry, Zoe tried to call me in. I apologize. You turned <laughs> I sideways know it, like, there I didn't, know, I didn't know if it, like, cut my video or something. No, you just flipped. Oh, okay. You did flips oh. and shit. Yeah, I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> the next match was a match that we talked about. Earlier in the week when we had on our special mm-hmm. guest. That's my girl right there. Give so earlier on in chance. the week, earlier on in the week, if you didn't, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, we got in, we got in the good ones, Pastor CeeLo, for a little interview. He chopped it us, chopped it up with us for about 20 minutes and basically told us the future. He he basically predicted his own future. He babe roosted it, called his own shot. However, you want to give the analogy, my friend. He came on here on the Pile Driver podcast and he told us that he was walking into the Breaking Down Barriers Battle Royal and he was walking out the winner and walking into the heavyweight championship match at the end. He did. And he did. Not the only story to come out of the Breaking Down Battle Royal. Let me go over a list of the participants real quick. But the the stories in the Battle Royal, Tyreek Kalam, the Infinity Champion, 
and RJ Jonesy were both in the battle royal. And general manager Brandon Xavier had proclaimed that if they did not win, whoever threw them over the top rope claimed their title. So a title would change hands. And at this point, you kind of either would hope that one of them would win the match so that they wouldn't lose their title was not the case in what looks like a stacked battle royal. I'm talking stacked. Let me go over the names of these participants. Jeff Jevick, the ageless wonder. My girl. Raven Aura, <laughs> Anthony Holloway, Chris Onyx, the Tin Man Tony Miller, the Lost Prodigy Dio Salvador, JVM, the return of the mouthpiece of the masses, Nick Nero. Okay. Tyreek, the Infinity Champion, Tyreek Kalam, the Brass Knuckles Champion, RJ Jonesy, Mucho Machismo Luis Diavani, the M Mad Dog Manson, the Ultimate Normier. Did you see this? This was yes, phenomenal, by the I way. Did. <laughs> and Bull Rope Bully, Mike Michaels, and the good one, Pastor CeeLo. Now, at one point during the match, the professor decided to come out, who's been having a beef with Tyreek. Did he cost so him the, the title? The professor comes out. Tyreek, Tyreek gets to talking shit to the professor. Somebody takes, I don't know whose spot he took, but he took somebody's spot and inserted himself in their position to eliminate Tyreek Kalam. And I've been telling you all this for a year to watch out for my man, Butchie B, your new infinity champion, Butchie I love B. It. I love it. I Bring in some it. gold to the mega church, baby. I'm telling you. I'm, I tried to tell you. In another change of events, RJ Jonesy was also not able to retain his title in this battle royal. He loses the title, the Brass Knuckles Championship, to Mucho Machismo, Luis Giovanni. Two new champions. You're already, you're what? The first match was only two three champions minutes. in the same match. The first match was only three minutes long. We're in this match, it looks like it's a uh, 14 minutes and 42 seconds for the battle royal. So it wasn't a super long battle royal, but the good one. But the it, good I'm sure one. it was. I'm sure it was a great one. But we're talking 20 minutes into the show, and we got two title changes already. Anything can happen at Mega. It's mm -hmm. not like that's that's the beauty of it. I I loved this for Brandon when he put this stipulation in. Man, yes. I loved it I because loved it not only does it give the winner of the Breaking Down Battle Royal a chance at a title shot later on in the night, but it also gives those champions more motivation to try to win that battle royal so they mm -hmm. don't lose their current title. Yeah. It, it was just, I mean, come on. And it, it ultimately just gave more excitement to the match that there already, I mean, there already was excitement towards it, you know what I'm saying? But it exactly. just like threw some gas on the fire right there. In the next like, match, in the next oh, match, we had a hold, singles hold, match. Hold, 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 hold. Oh, sorry. The good pastor. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. This. I forgot to say this. The battle royal. <laughs> The good pastor won. Yes, he did. Just he like called he his shot. He said he would. Just like he said he would. And it was already in discussion for a while, but that just solidified the fact that he is the first ever. The first ever. The inaugural Pile Driver Pod Wrestler of the Week. Pastor CeeLo. Congratulations, my man. Congratulations to the good one. Well deserved. I it's, you know, definitely well-deserved, man. I, I can't think of anybody better right now this week that I got to watch that did that deserved it any more than he did. I mean, for He's been wrestling now, all over from numerous promotions, even doing double duty, spreading the gospel of the mega church, and getting some huge victories along the way. It's, yeah. I can't, I have nothing bad to say about Pastor Silo at this point in time. I have had nothing bad to say about Pastor Silo for a while. Probably ever since the first time I saw him, for real. The mega church. Slap ever a rocket the... on Pastor CeeLo in the mega church. To the, to the moon. To the moon. Because, yeah, I, I just everything they're doing right now is phenomenal. They're just, the whole mega church as a whole, bro, yeah. is just going crazy. Sebastian sean has been killing it. It's great. Butchie B. Doing new Infinity thing. Champion. 
Man. It's you know it's crazy. It's great to see. It's great to see. Congratulations to Pastor Celo on the first ever, the first ever Pile Driver Pod Wrestler of the Week. Well deserved, my man. That's the new thing. I think you know we've decided we're going to start doing that way we can showcase you know. And if you if you're listening to our show and you maybe haven't heard of these wrestlers, give them a look up, man. They're good wrestlers. We're not just you know hitching yeah. our wagons to you know bodies here. We're tr- we we see the talent in these people and what they're bringing to the table. So we want to each week we're going to start showcase. showcasing. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate their work. We want some other people to share. I mean, appreciate it as well because I think they deserve the spotlight. Uh, they deserve the recognition for the hard work they put in. So, what mm-hmm. better way to honor them by that? So, congratulations, CeeLo. You are the first one, but man, you well deserved. All right now, the, go ahead. Sorry. No, you're fine. the The next match we had a singles match for the Mega Fighting Spirit Championship. LSD Lemmy Sandemus pinned the American gangster Isaiah Wolf after the old razzle dazzle modified leg sweep, buddy. So I, good. I, I love Lemmy, dude. The the guru of the bottom rope, they call him. It's it's the little elbow drops and all that stuff he's able to actually do off the bottom rope is actually I've never seen anything like it. So I, I love it. It's oh, congratulations yeah. to Lemmy for retaining your title yet again. Got a killer run going, bud. Um, the next one. Okay, this was a little bit of a revenge match from the last show that we were at. We had a six-person tag team match. Cash Inc., Gavin, Skyler, and Christian. Taking on PME, the tag team champions, and the ultra star Ashton Day. It looked like this match was all around everything you expected it to be. Yeah. It, it you know it didn't disappoint, but at one point, Gavin got caught alone in the ring, and you know he got the top row blockbuster from Ashton. There's the pin. I mean, that's all it takes. It's all it takes. I got. I have nothing bad to say. I can't. Again, I wish that I had more to say on these matches because I wish I was there. Right. I don't, ha- you know, the film's being edited, so I'm going to watch this because this is oh, a great hell show. Yeah, I'm going to watch this. But it's it's just, I wish I had more to say. I, you know, obviously I feel bad for my friends in Cash Inc. It's hard when you like both sides of the coin. It's hard. It's hard to like both sides of the coin because ev- everybody in Cash Inc., I'm, I'm down for They'll it. bounce back. Cash Inc. will bounce back. Everybody on the other side of the bell, Ashton, PME, also down for it. It's hard, man. It's hard. So it's when these matches come up, I'm just, here's your result. I don't know what to say. Go, Ashton. Go, PME. You ever see that old TikTok video? Everybody, that dude good job. Like, talking about his whole football team. He's like naming out people off dog. Yeah. Dog. 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 <laughs> like, that, you know? PME, dogs. Ashton, yeah. Day, Ashton dog. Day, dog. <laughs> Gavin Bradley, dog. Skyler, dog. Christian, Nick, dog. dog. Like <laughs> everybody. The, the next match, okay. This one might be. I don't know if you want to call it a surprise, because we've been preaching Sebastian for weeks. Sebastian Lashawn picks up a victory over Ruthless Lala and, and Megan nice. Myers. And like it for those of you again who don't know, or maybe you're new to our show, you met us at Neo Pro, and this is your first time listening. Megan Myers is probably one of the best females I've seen wrestle on the independent circuit. She's very, 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 very good. When that you see good. her, you don't expect her to take a loss because she is so good. I expect her to win all the time. I don't. This I think this was the first time I've ever seen her name on the losing column at, a, at an event. Not, you know, not just mega, just in general, but like, yeah, she's, you know, she's doing, you know, a dub things. She's doing other things. She's doing, she's, she's a great wrestler. She's a great wrestler. So it speaks volumes that Sebastian LaShawn was able to out wrestle that Sebastian, not only her, but ruthless Lala. It, it was something that, I mean, mega church was winning, bro. Yeah. This uh, we we can't say it any other way right now. Well deserved. The mega too. the mega church seemed like they were winning, breaking down barriers. Business is booming for the mega in, church. 
Business is a boom. In the next match, we had a four man tag team match. Yeah. Just a regular old tag team match. The return of Ricky Shane Page and Vince and Nothing. Faith in what? Nothing. <laughs> Um, they went in a tag team, you know, they faced off in a tag team match against the party posse. And, um, I saw, I saw something coming out, you know, taco had a sign that said faith in parties that made me laugh really hard. Yeah, I see that too. That was great. Um, you know, shout out to Michelle and Jose for their awesome pictures that oh, those, they you know, always kill it every time. Um, it, that, you know, the party posse wasn't able to take off the veterans. I mean, it's, it's it's Ricky Shane Page, man. Vince nothing. Vince nothing. Yeah. Like <laughs> you can catch Vince nothing at the RSC and Ricky Shane Page over in RCW Ruthless Wrestling. Yeah, they got a show coming up. We'll be talking about that uh, here after this. After we finish Mega here, I'll just let me we'll yeah. Let me get let stuff. me get through. Um, let me get through. We've got we their get dogs. Two more they're dogs, but we can't sleep on the party bus either. We love I, everybody. Loves El Taco. The next match was a non-title singles match because it now had a champion in it. Butchie B one-on-one with Alex Daniels. And Damn, I don't I'm looking know if, smooth with the new strap on him too. I don't know if you saw Brandon's post, but Brandon Xavier made a post and I had seen other people like comment on videos or pictures of, you know, the mega show and say how good this match was. And then Brandon posted and said, this match is what you kids would call a banger. And again, I read nothing, but Alex Daniels did a move. That's an Alex Daniels. Yes. Alex yes. Daniels did a move that should have been considered a finishing move. And Butchie kicked out to which Butchie then responded with a finishing move of his own. And Alex Daniels kicked out and they, they said they went back like the mat. The, what I read from this match is they went back three or four times with this and put on a, a five star. Like from what I read, I assume that this match was fire. I've seen Alex Daniels wrestle a few times. He's, Duke can go. So can Butchie. I've been saying <laughs> this for a year. So I can only imagine that this match was fire. I can't wait to watch it. Um, Alex Daniels was able to pull off the win over Butchie B. Butchie B, like I said, non-titles match, so he still got to take home his gold. He still had a win for the he still got in a win column for the night. Fatal four way to end the show. Bryson Teller defending his title against Tyson Maddox, Greg Irons, and the winner from the Battle Royal, the good, the good one, Pastor CeeLo. So I've read again, great match. At one point during the match, though, I don't know how it got to this point. Tyson Maddox tried to make off with the collection plate that was full of money and donations from the congregation of Mega Church and tried to make off with it. So Pastor CeeLo ended up chasing him all the way to the back, actually, and they were never to return. So which left Bryson Teller going one-on-one -on -one with Greg Iron, which, real quick, I do want to shout this out. Greg Iron was accompanied to the ring by his manager, Hardcore Mike Holly. I've known Mike... I've known Matt Holly and his wife, Lindsay, and that's Matt's little brother. I've known Mike Holly forever. He loves wrestling. And to see him get to come out and be Greg Irons' manager, I saw pictures awesome. of him stuff. It was fucking cool. Um, so, yeah, cool. it was Bryson that's Teller. Versus I, I love I love this show. Just yeah. everything that Breaking Barriers does. Um, especially me as a father of a child with Down syndrome. I think it's great when any light is shown in any Anything they get involved with, that's great. So, yeah, love it. Bryson Teller was able to pull out the victory against Gregory Irons to retain his mega heavyweight championship and end the night on what seemed to be. I, I can't again, if I'm reading what I'm reading here, this whole you know match kind of outbreak or down broken down and stuff like that. This was a five star show, too, man. This is a five pile driver style show, too. This is called for what it is because I agree, just from what we read, the results. Sounds like a five star to me. And as for that, you know, we're going to move on from Mega, but I do want to let everybody know the next Mega show. The next Mega show. I'm going to try my, well, I'm going to this. I'll be there. I'm going to try to be for all three of them, actually, because there's three of them. It's a triple packed night, Friday, June 2nd at Colossal Con at Kalahari 
in Sandusky, Ohio. There's a show at 6 p.m. There's a show at 8 p.m. And there's a show at 10 p.m. I'm going to try to make them all. So that's the next mega show live at Kalahari for Colossal Con. They are part of that Colossal Con, you know, that's gonna be huge. convention. You got to go, dude. I've never it's been to a Comic Con. Be- never been to one. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to have a great time. Might be my first. Let's do it. All right, so let the people in on some other events, and then we will. What we got, we got coming up next? We got a lot of stuff coming up in the Northeast Ohio area. If you guys, for the next month or so, we got AIW coming up Friday, this Friday, May fifth, Cybernetico de Mayo two or Dos. It's gonna be Friday, May fifth at the Outpost Concert Club in Kent, Ohio. Get your tickets. It's gonna be a banger. AIW never lets down. Um. Wednesday, May 31st, RCW. If you want to see Vincent Nothing and Ricky Shane Page, Angel Metro, there's so many other great wrestlers there. Uh, Wednesday, May 31st at the Neo Sports Plant. Sebastian LaShawn. Yeah. The good one, Pastor CeeLo. They're yep. all at RCW. Exactly. It's in Euclid Avenue in Cleveland. So it's on Wednesday. Tickets are on sale right now. It's for Ground Zero Three. Go to that if you have the um if you're if you're available that day. We got OCW tradition celebrating Boy, 20 I got an, years. Of I got OCW. an announcement for this one. I got an announcement. It was recently moved to Kim Tam Park. It's going to be outdoors. It's going to be huge. We got the brass ring gauntlet coming up. It's it's going to be a great one. What's your announcement for that? What you got? We have a couple of people that have been qualified for the brass ring gauntlet. The Thunderbird. And then, that's right. The Thunderbird. Jake Ealing. Ryan Michaels also has been qualified for the Brass Ring Gauntlet. And then also today, I was just, well, not today. I was informed on on Saturday at, at Neo Pro. But also joining tradition, I'm not sure in what role. We will also be seeing our good buddy Wilbur Whitlock. We'll be wrestling at OCW. So I'm really excited to see him back. Um, That's where we I first met Wilbur. So I'm, again, pumped to see him back in OCW. I don't know what capacity he's going to be in. But I did see that he will be in attendance for OCW. So that's really cool. Um, And we have had another match announcement. Chuck the Truck Morris has picked his stipulation at Tradition to fight Derek Dillinger for the Heritage Championship. Let the people know what that stipulation is. Toe strap match. Toe strap. Who, Who better to know their way around a toe strap than Chuck the Truck? That's right. So if you're not familiar uh, with that, I'm assuming it's kind of like a bull strap match, or it is. It's kind of yeah, like a like a rope, like a like a strap match, just like a rather like a leather strap match. I'm but Polly, you know, Polly got got in my head a little bit, and he said that you know every time you know he didn't, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that Derek's ran from Chuck, but Polly has said that every time Chuck gets around, Derek runs away. (laughs) This prevents Derek from running away. I understand the logic. Interesting. Yeah. I I look at it as Derek playing his mind games. That's what Derek does. Yeah. So not he's running so away. Good like at it. He's scared. He's so good at it. It's he's fucking with Chuck's head. So you know, like, uh, I it's fine. I'm that the toast try match. It's gonna be a good match. I guarantee it. Get tickets now. Come to Tim Kim Tam Park. We will be hanging out at Kim Tam Park. Um, twenty years of OCW. You can't you just come hang out with us, man. We're gonna have a great time. Come kick it with us. So we got that coming up. We got old new wrestling coming up at Beachland Ballroom on Saturday, June tenth. That's gonna be a great one. Um, pre-sale tickets are available right now. I think it's like eighteen dollars or twenty dollars at the door. If you're available that day, look for something to do. Go check that out. It should be a great time. And then coming up, the next show that we're gonna be going to, Circle Six recently announced that they're gonna be coming back to the land. With Snowblind on Saturday, May 13th, right back at the Mercury Music Lounge. Right back where we were last time. That was a great event, man. I had I a great I had a great time there. They've already announced some people that are gonna be there. The Kogar brothers are gonna be in attendance. Christian Napier is gonna be in attendance. Big Al is gonna be in attendance. Dean's, uh, Dean's already Dean, Dean's already like I should bring flowers. <laughs> got good foot. Uh just there's, there's some people. They haven't announced any matches yet, but they've announced some people. So hurry man, up and I get your tickets, get, man. Because I hope we get like a I last time, man. You. Last time we got Terracotta Torture, um, a barroom brawl, uh, uh, three stages of hell match, basically. And um, 
Fan fucking bring, fans, fans bring your own weapons. Like tickets sold out for the last show fairly quick. So if you're not doing anything, we, are, we already got ours. Yeah, there's the tickets have been secured. We're trying to get the same I, tickets. Okay, I well, want like a barbed wire time. match. There's gonna be some blood. So that would be. Cool. We can't wait for Circle Six. That's gonna be. A, that's gonna. It never disappoints. Um, if you're into that type of wrestling, they're amazing at what they're doing. Um, go grab it, go grab it. I guarantee you're going to have a good time. And it's a bar, too. Have some drinks, have some fun. It's going to be good. Yeah. And no, just to shoot this out again, Neo Pro Revenge, Saturday, June 17th. Look for the drop for the tickets, for the link for that to pick those up. Um, it's it's going to be great. It's going to be great. There's a lot of great wrestling coming up here in Northeast Ohio. We've been preaching it to you week in and week out, telling you that Northeast Ohio has some of the best wrestling offer around. So we got all these promotions, different dates. None of them are overlapping. Go watch some fucking wrestling. You're going to love it. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And on that note, on that note, on the fantastic independent wrestling, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in our top five for the evening right now. Let's do it. Top five for this got? evening. And I, I came up with this today, and I thought it was good because we're, we've been doing a lot of independent wrestling. Yeah. I don't want this to be a ranking order. So this is in no way which one you think is the best. Okay. I just I want five wrestlers from you, independent wrestlers, that you want to see Ooh, more of. Okay. That you want to see more of in any promotion. doesn't have to be a specific promotion, just – I really like the way I saw them a couple times, or I saw them, you know, 15 times. It doesn't matter. You know, like you could, of course, you could say Derek Dillinger. That's fine. But I, I'm hoping to get some people like that you just, you know, right. somebody you no, just no, saw no. for the first for sure. time. For sure. Um, I like that. That's a good one. Switch things up. I mean, you just threw me a curveball. Do you want me to start things off? Yeah, go ahead. And this is no specific specific order. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not up. this is not your favorite wrestler. And I'm gonna pick somebody. You know I'm gonna pick him. He's he's green. He's lightningy. I won't pick him first. You know what I'm saying? Like because just I'm gonna to go put... with Patrick Hayes. Okay, perfect. So that's I exactly seen, what I, I, I got. See. I got a first taste of him in person there this past week in Neo Pro One. I'm impressed. The dude is a, Knows how to work the heel. He knows how to work the crowd. He he does it very damn well. Dude's super talented in the ring too. I want to see more of it now. I'm I'm becoming a fan. Perfect. That's exactly that's exactly what I wanted from this. Okay, and now my first one. I'm gonna go. It, it's just the same kind of route, man. I've seen him a couple times. Every time I've seen him, he's gotten better. I would love to see him in any of the promotions that we talk about or anywhere else. The side piece, Brian Huff, man. Yeah, that's a good. He's one. phenomenal. That's he's really, one. really, really good. That it's a good one. I saw him push Derek to the limit for a heritage title. A tag team. I'm gonna can I do a tag team? Of course. I want to see more members only. Good pick, because if you didn't out who I was gonna take with my tag team. I've seen I love them a lot only. a few times with whether it was AIW, uh OCW, um They've always showed out, dude, and I dig their vibe. H2V2 is another good one up there, but I want to see some more members only. Members only. Perfect. That's a great one. Hmm. Now I feel like I'm obligated to pick a tag team. Get to get them talkie boys. <laughs> I would love that. I will. I will take them. I will take them. Because they're working, good. Working class, man. Out of Kentucky. Um, I still follow Josh all the time on his socials. I, the other guy's name's Gavin. I, I don't really follow. I follow him, but I, he doesn't really post as much. I don't, I'm not sure if he's not wrestling as much anymore. I know he still wrestles, but not as much as Josh. Josh is doing a lot of single stuff. Um, Josh Williams. I, I would totally go with him. Good one. There, I was the one time we seen that, that at OCW. That was We left there. That was like the first thing we said at the end of the show. Like, working class, bro. What? Yeah, yeah. Josh Williams is his name. He's wrestling. He's actually got an event coming up in Tennessee. He's wrestling. So he's Premier being pre, pre, Premier League Wrestling Mid League Atlantic. Jeez, that's a mouthful. 
but yeah, he's. I mean, I, the clip. If you go on his in, on his main social, it's probably one of my favorite clips of him. He's jumping over like over the turnbuckle, like Kofi style, like over the post, like front flip over the post. He's the the, the kid is nasty, man. He's good. I'd love to see him back up in, up in, in the, up in the north. I would love to see it. I'm going to my next pick is another one that we just recently seen at Neo Pro with Justin Main. Okay, good pick. Might, like. I want to see what else he can do. I was left impressed. Dude's athletic as hell. Looks like he, yeah. he's he's a pretty big dude too. Yeah, like I said, he he looked very similar. He gave me very Johnny Cage vibes. Like I want to see him go against a maybe like Jake Ely would be a good matchup. Speaking of. I'm going to take him at number three, the Thunderbird. I've been saying it since the beginning. Jake Ely, he's good, okay. man. He's good. That's a good one. Let's see. I'm going to have. I got my to... last two if you don't take them. I got a few, but I don't want to be biased. Exactly. It's not biased. There's no bias. We're not in no particular order. I know. It's but just think... us get more more so trying to, you know, help get their name out there. I mean, Sebastian LaShawn is one of them, for sure. There you go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, I'll that's play, my next I'll... pick. I'm going with Sebastian LaShawn. And I'll, and I'll, that's perfect because I'll play my next pick right off of that. What she fucking be, baby. Butchie B. Strapped I've been saying church. it. I've been saying it for a while. He's good, man. He's good. He's good. He's good. And it's it's showing. It's showing the mega church is bringing it out of him. He's holding the belt. He's going to defend that belt, and I guarantee you, he's going to defend it successfully. I yeah. got nothing but nothing but love for my boy Butchie B. My last pick. Are we do we do an honorable mention too. Yeah, you do. I don't mention. I mean, it's not like a favorite, but it just gives us another extra name to throw out. Yeah, there. it just gives us an extra pick. Um, Christian Napier. I'm okay with that. Young Chuck Christian, Christian kills it every time. I love it. I'm when we go to Circle Six on May 13th. I'm totally buying a Christian Napier shirt. All right, it, he's good, man. I've yeah. ever since the first time I've seen him, even the, you know, formerly known as. I saw him and he was good then. And he just he's done nothing but got better and it's better and better and better. And I want and I like I wanted to say the Kogar brothers too, but they're like they've been killing it for a while. Atticus and Otis have been just doing their thing. They've been like running shit the past few years. So it's like So use them use them as your honorable mention because I got no, somebody for that too that I can no, use as my honorable mention I think I'm going to use for another local guy and I think Vincent Nothing is that person um we've seen him at circle six uh he was just at mega he's gonna be at rcw dude he's a big dude and he can go he has a wrestler's build for sure he, he does looks like a brick shit house he has he gives off like carrying cross vibes what carrying cross should be i think yeah if I'm that a, makes that's, sense that's, that's a good one that's a good one like kieran kind of has that look like he's a killer vincent looks like he's a killer like Okay. I think it needs that recognition. So my last two, I'm going to, we're going to call it my honorable mention. Uh I'll give you that one last. Pick my last, but certainly not least. A man, again, who I feel I kind of hitched my wagon to a year ago. The Ultra Star, Ashton fucking Day. Dude, he's good, man. I knew you were going to pick him. That's why I did so and then my honorable mention, my honorable so not mention, favorites, you know. yeah, they're not favorites. My honorable yeah. mention, man, I had it and then I just brain farted like I had somebody I wanted in there. <clears throat> Zachary Wentz. It's you know I haven't seen that's, as much that's right of there it. with the Kogar brothers for me. Exactly, that's why I was kind of going to play after your Kogar brothers. Um, but Zachary was also in WWE. All right, that's fine. Okay, I'll take it back. I still love you, Zach. Yes. Um, but I, my, honorable, my honorable mention, 
It makes no sense. This is what it was. It makes no sense. I don't even know how I brain farted. It's because we've talked about him so many times tonight. It makes no sense to not make my honorable mention the pile driver wrestler of the week. The good one. Pastor CeeLo. So many other good wrestlers, man. I but yes, there, absolutely. So many I, good ones. But I just thought that was a good way to like, you know, it again, was. showcase a couple guys around us. Fuck yeah, it was. Dude, um, that was a good one. That threw me probably off. Probably one of my favorite moments, and I said this last week on the pod was when we were at the sneak peek and the girl next to me was like, I heard about him. He's real good. And it was CeeLo and he went ape shit crazy and ran around and did his thing and got donations for the church. And like people are talking about him, man. So, you know, again, congrats to CeeLo on being the first ever wrestler of the week for the pile driver podcast. Um, oh yeah, congrats man. Well deserved. Everybody in Northeast Ohio that put on a show, Brandon Xavier, you killed it. Je- Jason, you guys killed it. Everything was just top notch again it looked from what i read and what i saw it looked like we had two five-star shows on saturday you can't ask for much more man no so if, you, if you're in the area for any of those shows that we named off uh i please go grab some tickets you're gonna have a support, great time no matter these what wrestlers yes buy some merch hang out take a picture with them get their autograph because we need some whitlock know. merch man you well, never know. taking I mean, over some orders for right real. Now for like I'm merch. saying, though, get in, get some merch, get get you know maybe take a picture with one of these guys and get their autograph. Because yeah. you know, what if in ten so, years one of them's the heavyweight champion of the world in WWE? Man, plus support them. Support the wrestlers. They're putting their bodies on the line. Oh, a hundred percent. That's you what I'm saying. saying. Buy their merch. Buy their merch. You know, pay the pay the ten bucks. Take a picture. Get an autograph. Hang out with them. Chat with them for a minute. They're all nice guys. I don't think I've met anyone really that's an asshole. So it's not like anybody's ever been like, get the hell away from me or anything like that. When I've come up to say, you know, good job or anything of that. Right. Everybody's been super nice to us. Um, You know, everybody has been super thankful, you know, for everything that we do here. And we, we wouldn't be able to do any of this crap without you guys. So it really doesn't. I, I pre, we appreciate the thank you, but it really doesn't make any sense because really, we should be thinking it's, yeah. it's thanking you, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, I don't really have much else for the night. No, we got the WWE draft. We'll go over that next week. We'll touch up on it. You guys are probably I mean, it watching it. It's, it is we what knew, it is. We, come on. You knew who was getting picked number one. Right. It is what it is. The only really big topic is who's going to win that new gold. Yeah. And I think it's going to be Seth Rollins. So, because, again, if you put it on Cody Rhodes, it looks like a consolation prize. Yeah, I agree. Seth Rollins should win it. So, yeah. I mean, it, if you're watching WWE, you pay attention to the draft. We're talking indie wrestling here. Yeah. It's indie wrestling. We still watch our WWE wrestling. We still, you know, pay attention to what's going on, but you're watching it. There's a million other Twitters that are talking yeah. about it. Talk about some Northeast Ohio, baby, because we got it going on. Oh, Northeast Ohio's lit. Damn right it is, dude. Damn right it is. It's, it's sure honestly made me fall back in love with wrestling. So 100%. 100%. And I'm going to keep telling everybody that. Go check out a local show. You'll fall in love with it. I yep. guarantee you, there's, there's nothing like it. Um, well, yeah, I got nothing else either. Uh, with that being said, man, go ahead. I believe the media shows shout out to believe the media in general. We love you. Love being part of the team. Um, go follow Brown and Orange Weekly if you're a Browns fan. We got all things Cavalier if you're a Cavs fan. Guardians of Sealy is killing it right now if you're a Guardians baseball fan. We got double play CLE, a little bit of everything. We got a little bit of everything for everybody. So go to believe the media, go hit the YouTube, subscribe. Go follow us on all the socials and all the streaming Likes, platforms. Shares, like, comments. rate it. It helps us. So we appreciate you guys. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode of The Pile Trap. Later. Peace, y'all.